Hi friend, it's Hunter from Interactive and in today's video we'll take a look at how to create paper textures for your bottles and labels. Now we'll create this texture from scratch. I won't be showing you how to do the debossing here. We'll leave that for another tutorial. However, we'll just focus on this paper texture here, which if we don't plug this in, looks a bit like this. So it's pretty flat and actually looks half decent because of the noise in our render but we can just add that extra pop by adding in a bump map with a texture and we're going to show you how to create that texture so i think the easiest way to create the texture is by using photoshop so what we can do is go to google and i've just gone to unsplash or pixels here and so then you can just search paper textures and these come up with loads of different paper textures that you could use. I found Unsplash to be the best one. And some of these paper textures are very subtle, but they have some nice coloring, have some nice imagery in here that we could use. And so in this scene, I ended up picking this one here and you can just open it up, download the highest resolution if possible the original size there and once you've downloaded that we can jump in to Photoshop so this is the texture that I set up before so what we can do is go file new and I usually create my textures as 4k um, this is usually the standard resolution 4096 pixels if you want your scene to render faster if you're making whole heap of textures you would drop this down and in this case I will most likely be scaling the texture down so it's smaller and so a texture size this big may not be needed if we are going to be rendering uh, large amounts in our scenes however I'm okay with this resolution so what we'll do is create this 4000 by 4000 and it's 4096 and we want it to be square and I'll show you that in a little bit the reasoning behind that and so then I'm just putting in a resolution or a DPI of 72 16 bit color should be fine and we'll keep it RGB and hit create so now you can navigate to where you've downloaded your texture and you can just drag and drop this one in so that's what it looks like drag it in in this case i scaled it down to fit my scene and you can just hit the tick up the top here like so now what i want to do with this is i want to offset this now when i did this the texture was pretty seamless already but to create a seamless texture what you want to do is go to your filter down to other and with the layer selected of the texture hit offset and we want to offset it by our resolution so 496 and you can just put in the divided or slash key and put in 2 and so this is then 2048 pixels so it's offsetting it by half the document here in both the vertical and horizontal directions so basically it's just moving this whole sheet to the right by this much and to down by this much hit ok and if you have a texture that has gradients on the side or anything like that you'll start to see that there is a line in both of these edges here in this case our texture is pretty good but if we do zoom in you can see here there's a line going down the center and it should be going across horizontally as well so if I just make sure I get into the center here the horizontal ones a bit harder to see but it's there so all I do then is I'll just duplicate this layer here dragging it down to the plus and what I'll do is select this layer right click and I will go rasterize layer That'll get rid of the smart object so I can work with it. Now, if I just go command or control zero, it'll fill the scene. 
zoom out a little bit. Over here we have our spot healing brush. And usually I just use this, I can click at the top, shift click down the bottom, and just create this straight line down the center. And that'll just sort of spot heal it. I'll try and do it across this side too. That way is pretty good, but. So now when we zoom into the center, our texture is pretty seamless. So there is a line here. The texture here is pretty seamless. So what I can do now is go file or save as a copy. You could save this Photoshop file if you wanted to. I'll just save it on my computer. Select the texture, put a number behind it, name it. I don't want this to be Photoshop. You can choose whether you want it to be PNG or TIFF. TIFF just doesn't compress it. So usually I like the quality of a TIFF but it also produces a bigger file. So PNG is probably the best way to go here. Hit save, hit okay. Now it's time to jump over into Blender. So over in Blender, what we can do here, I'm just going to duplicate this material, select all this, I will delete it and reset it up. First of all, you have to make sure that you've got your UVs unwrapped. So here I've got my UVs all good to go. Um, this is mainly for the label design here. And once that's good to go, you can drag and drop your image in. So we can go Shift A, you can press S to search or click the search. And we'll search for image texture. You can open up, navigate to where your image is. Pick your image, open it up. Now for a normal or a bump map here, we've got to make sure that it's set to non-color. Now what we'll do is we'll add in a mapping node down here using Shift A once again. And we'll add in a texture coordinate node. So this will tell us or tell Blender how do we want the texture mapped to our object? So in this case, we're going to use the UV mapping, which means that we'll use this to map it to the label here. And so now that that's all done, because our image is just the color image, or we've set it to non-color, but it was a color image and not a normal map, we want to go to bump and we'll just plug the color into the height and the normal into the normal. Wait for that to render out. You can see straight away that we've got our paper texture going on. It's very strong and we can do a few things here. So we could choose to scale this up to two. Have a look at it and experiment with these numbers. Just try all sorts of different numbers. So if we scale it up to really high, 10, you can see what happens. We scale it down really low, 0.2, it's really big, yeah. So in this case, I'm going to scale it to about one, leave it at that. Now, all I do here is just drop the distance down to something like 0.1. And when that goes down, you can also drop down the strength. So that's a really nice light effect and you can just adjust the distance from here, adjust the strength as you would like. And you should be able to get the desired result from here. The point two. I think I want it a little bit lighter than that. Now I want to point out something else is denoising will get rid of the texture. So if I save this and do a render, once that's done, we'll see what happens in the denoising stage. All right, so in this case, it's done a pretty good job and we've still got the paper texture in here. You could still choose to tweak this more and create a lighter paper texture if you would like. But I'm pretty happy with this. 
at a distance, I think it would look fairly decent. Another thing I just wanted to show you is if we pump in just the original image, that's not a square, and I tab into here, and in my UVs over here, I load in that image. You'll see here that the image here gets stretched, so our UVs get stretched up. And so what happens is because our image isn't a square ratio, which we've been using for our label texture over here, which is what we've created the UVs to. If I uh, pull this image up and I tab in, my UVs are designed to fit this image on and put this image on so this image doesn't have any stretching. But if I then go and put in another image, so we'll put in a stretched image, it'll stretch my UVs up, which means it'll stretch the texture as well. Then you've got to go do all this stuff like adjusting the scale if you wanted to get it right. But that's why over in Photoshop, I put it into a square document. Because then what happens is it keeps my UVs the exact same size and if everything's the same resolution, it should be good. But just to keep it the same ratio, which is usually square in the 3D world, we usually use uh, square seamless textures, then you can make sure that the texture doesn't get stretched. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one.